forget to, forgot to mention after worship today, um, some years we've passed out a devotional to all the men here, not, not just the dads who are here, but all the men who are here this morning. In other years, we've had a chocolate bar, which has kind of been a big hit, but from what I heard, I don't know, we don't have any official statistics on this, but many of the moms took the dad's chocolate bars so, and ate them, so again, maybe that was just a rumor, I don't know, but this year it's a pack of lifesavers that says, uh, Jesus said unto him, I am the way, the truth, and the life, and no one comes to the Father except through him, and so those, um, all the men that are here this morning, and that includes young guys too, um, it will uh, just please uh, get a pack of lifesavers on your way out. It's just a small token of appreciation. The, I'd like to start with the verse today. It's Ephesians 5, 1 and 2. It's, it's really a, a, a powerful passage of Scripture, and it's a, really a high calling from God. Again, not, not just for, for dads, for all of us, for all, all um, people. Ephesians 5, 1 and 2 says, Follow God's example, therefore as dearly loved children... As those who are loved by our Heavenly Father, follow God's example as dearly loved children and walk in the way of love, just as Christ loved us and gave himself up for us as a fragrant offering and sacrifice to God. Christ's love, and many of us know, and we've talked before about the different types of love that are talked about in the Bible, but this, this love is that agape love. It's that self-sacrificial love love as Christ loved us and gave himself up for us, not putting his own needs first, but putting the needs of others, putting our needs and the needs of all people before his own. Follow God's example. We have God's example as we follow the example of Jesus when he walked this earth, God the Son, and walk in the way of love. It, it's a high calling to, to model ourselves after God or actually to model our lives after Jesus. And I just would like to ask, but, but why? Or what, what if we don't? Does it, does it really matter if we do or if we don't? Tiff, what do you think? Tiff said it makes life easier if we did. Okay. For sometimes, sometimes it could make life harder in some ways, right? So if we follow, if we follow the way of Christ... In a world, and I'm not saying the world's terrible, but you know, in the world in general, in our culture in many ways, if, it's, if, if the culture is not following the way of Christ, and if we're going against the flow, sometimes that can be harder, but it's not, that doesn't mean it's not best. Anyone else, does it really matter? If you do, your children will see it. If you do, your children will see it. It's an, it's an example and a model, and, that, and, and it will be... Um, They'll know it, right? Because actions do speak louder than words. What about in the big scheme of things? All right, Connie said it matters to God. It matters a lot. I, to me, it matters eternally. You know, how we live our lives, it, has, it makes an eternal difference, not only for our lives, but for others as well. It, it makes all the difference. Yesterday at the Strawberry Festival, um, I was sitting by some folks, and we were reminiscing and talking, and th when I walked in, uh, one of the guys here said hi to me and said that Doyle Oler was the first one that invited him here. Uh, it's um, John Corrigan, who used to be the county auditor or treasurer. Or? County clerk. clerk. County clerk. And, oh, he still is. Okay. I, I, I almost said to him, I'm surprised you're still coming when you're out of politics. And I guess that answers that question. So he, um, <laughs> but Doyle, Doyle was the first one to invite him. And he comes every year for our Strawberry Festival. And he was saying, Hi to me and talking, and he mentioned about Doyle, and then was talking to um, Pat and Glenn Grimes, and talked about Gene Groves. And some of you remember Gene Groves. He passed on a number of years ago, but Gene was a real character. And but one thing that Gene said uh, a lot, he said, "You're on stage all of your life." He liked to say that, and he and I, I, I agreed with Gene not on everything, but <laughs> I agreed with him on that. He said, "You're on stage all of your life. That basically people people are watching you." I know I've, I've shared this poem before, but I'd like to read it again. This was given to me in a notebook of poems that my high school basketball coach gave to me my, before my senior year of basketball. So that was, what, about 38, 39 years ago. And the poem is a, a decent amount older than that. 
The poem was titled To Any Athlete, but I'm just changing the title, and, it, and the author's unknown. I'm just changing the title to To Any Christian. And this was a poem that was, again, given to me all those years ago, and I actually, I saved that notebook of poems. I still have it, and it was influential in my life then, and, and really it still is today as I think about this. To Any Christian, there are little eyes upon you, and again, this was written a long time ago, so it, <clears throat> It talks about a little boy, but it could be, <clears throat> excuse me, a little boy or a little girl, you know, just a, a young person. There are little eyes upon you, and they're watching night and day. There are little ears that quickly take in every word you say. There are little hands all eager to do anything you do, and a little boy who's dreaming of the day he'll be like you. He believes in you devoutly, holds that all you say and do he will say and do in your way when he's grown up just like you. He's a wide-eyed little fellow who believes you're always right, and his ears are always open, and he watches day and night. You are setting an example every day in all you do for the little boy who's waiting to be grown up and be like you. The thing is, that is true for all of us. No matter who we are, we're setting an example each and every day. Gene Groves was right when he said we're on stage all of our lives. In the bulletin insert today, there's another article that's it's titled, Our Children Are Watching. And not just our children, but others are watching us as well. Young people or people, you know, all people are watching. This, this says there is a spiritual need all children have that must be addressed, and God asks us as fathers to help meet that need. And again, God asks us as, as parents, God asks us as Christians to help meet that need. As Stephen just said about, you know, this, this, our church family has been his village to help him grow up in his faith. And that's what this article is saying. There is a spiritual need all children have that must be addressed, and God asks us to help meet that need. All fathers or all Christians are teachers. Some are absent, some are reluctant, but children will learn something from us. A father teaches through his actions, his love, and his communication about character and truth and everyday experiences. The question is, what do we want them to learn? <clears throat> A dad's presence and words are as important to teens today as they were in earlier times. And again, I would echo that a Christian's words and actions and presence. Our children are watching and listening to see how we will act and what we'll say. May they hear others say about us, I wish my father cared as much, or I wish I had people in my life that cared as much as those Christians. Children do learn what they live in the homes and in churches, at school. Many of us, probably most of us, could recall most of our teachers in school because they had such, we spent you know, a lot of time with them each day and they had a, an impact on our lives. Hopefully, and in my case, it was almost always for good. I can't even, I don't know if I remember ever having a, a, a teacher that was, had a negative influence. I think they all had a positive influence in one way or another. There's a, a poem that we put in, whenever we have a baptism for a child, I always slip a copy of this poem in with the baptism certificate, children learn what they live. If a child lives with criticism, he learns to condemn. If a child lives with hostility, he learns to fight. If a child lives with ridicule, she learns to be shy. If a child lives with shame, she learns to feel guilty. If a child lives with tolerance, he learns to be patient. If a child lives with encouragement, she learns confidence. If a child lives with praise, he learns to appreciate. If a child lives with fairness, she learns justice. If a child lives with security, she learns to have faith. If a child lives with approval, he learns to like himself. If a child lives with acceptance and friendship, she learns to find love in the world. I know these words I'm saying today are nothing new. I just saw yesterday, I think, a statement that I've heard many times before, and you probably have as well, that as Christians, you know, you are the only Bible that some people will ever read. And 
we, we've heard that phrase before and we've heard all this before, but really to think about it, the scripture says, follow God's example. We are to follow God's example and then be an example for children, for young people, really for, for all others. In Ephesians 5, that passage goes on. Be very careful then how you live, not as unwise, but as wise, making the most of every opportunity because the days are evil. Therefore, do not be foolish, but understand what the Lord's will is. Be very careful how you live. God, our Heavenly Father, is the perfect Heavenly Father, and we all know that some of us have had you know, good relationships with our Father, a good example, and just loving and caring, and, just, and, and some still do, and some fathers who have passed on. Others have had maybe you know, a so-so relationship, and others it's been strained, or even in some cases, I'm guessing, just because it's so prevalent in our society, that there are some here who had, you know, the, the, had maybe an abusive father and, and had to deal with that, and, and it, it makes it hard sometimes it makes it hard when we think about God as our Heavenly Father, but if we can all know, truly know that God is the perfect Heavenly Father. If, if you did not have an ideal situation, know that God is that ideal Father, that de- ideal Heavenly Father. I was talking, um, an example that came to me the other, well, several weeks ago, I guess, just thinking about things, and, and in, in my opinion, that God... Well, I, I believe with all my heart that the Bible is God's word and that the Bible is true and it's authoritative for our life. And um, over the last several months, even longer than that, but especially over the last several months, I've been talking to people about different issues and, and you know, basically standing on the, the truth of God's word. And, and I, I've talked to some people that say, basically, not, not really. You know, the Bible's an okay book. It's a good book and it has some good advice, but it's, you know, it was written a long time ago and we have to, you know, kind of take it with a grain of salt and some things apply back then, but, you know, they don't now. And and the example that I used and I said, suppose there was a a parent and since it's Father's Day, I'll just say a dad. Suppose there was a dad and, and he was at home with kids and younger kids and said to the kids, go outside and have fun. You know, put your phones down and quit doing your thumbs and go outside and have fun. So the kids go outside and he looks out the window a few minutes later and they're playing in the street. And he goes out and gets them and said, you can't play in the street, just have fun. Goes back in the house, a few minutes later, looks out the window, they're back playing in the street again. And he goes out to the street and uh, he goes out and gets them and says, I told you you can't play in the street. How do you think the kids would respond? What's that? They're angry and they want to play there, they want to play there. Opal said they might be angry because if they want to play there, they want to play there. That, that could happen. What if the kids responded and said, no, you said to have fun, and this is how we're having fun. No, and, and the dad would say what? I said to have fun, but I said you can't play in the street because why? It may be fun for a while, but as the one song says, you know, it was fun while it lasted, but it ain't no fun no more. You know, if a car comes along, that's not much fun. That's what I, I've heard that a lot lately about a lot of things. You know, people, to me, you know, they say, well, God says to love all people, love God and love others. Absolutely. God calls us to love God and not love others. But then, Underneath that, to qualify and to clarify that, God gives us other commandments. God gives us other rules. He gives us other you know, commands. Jesus says to love him is to, to follow those commands. Why? Because God wants what's best for us. God loves all people. God knows what's best for us, and God wants what's best for us. And I've been, I guess you could say, arguing or debating with some friends that, that, that are actually, you know, my friends, and they'll say, nope, just... Love God and love others. Like Opal said, they want to play in the street, so they're going to play in the street. Even though God said not to do it, God knows what's best for us. Be very careful then how we live our lives. 
according to God's word, according to God's truth. God knows and wants what's best for us, and, he know, and, and, and because of his love for us, not as unwise, but as wise, making the most of every opportunity, because the days are evil. Therefore, do not be foolish, but understand what the Lord's will is. We, have, we all have an opportunity. We have an opportunity each and every day to, to reflect the light of Christ, or I say this a lot when I teach at licensing school for new pastors, to reflect the light of Christ or to pollute the light of Christ. God's calling us to, to reflect the light of Christ and be an example in that way. When we were up at Lakeside this last week, it was just such a vivid reminder to me of the example of some others in my life we ran into a pastor named Bill Sowers. When Ann and I were teenagers at church camp, we weren't a couple at that time. We were from the same church, but we weren't uh, a couple. We were just friends. Bill Sowers had a big impact on both of our lives. And then when we got together as a couple and we were you know, boyfriend and girlfriend, and, and Bill Sowers just had such a, a positive example on our lives. We just saw him this week. That was 40 years ago. That's hard to imagine. You know, you think back and... And it was or almost 40 years ago. And just, you know, how you guys doing? And he calls her Angie. You know, Angie, how you doing? And Because that's, you know, again, that's, she wasn't Ann then. She was Angie back then. But um, it's just, you know, the example of his life. Another pastor that I look up to greatly, his name's Dave Scavuzzo. And I, I ran into him up there. And he, you know, asked how I was doing. And I said, okay. And, and he talked about, because I, you know, I was, part of the process of being elected as a delegate and going through all that stuff. And he said to me, he put his arm on my shoulder and he said, Clint, don't let him steal your heart. And I thought that was good advice. And I thought, but just, just the impact. And, you know, it was, and I'm not going to go into it, but the way these elections go, I was, I was just short the whole time. I, I was kind of like the, the, the leading candidate from a more conservative side. And then the other side, they had their list and they had more people voting, so they, I would always be right under the, the, the level to get elected. So my name kept being read, like, just missing it, just missing it, and then someone's elected, and then their list moved up, and people would come up to me that don't even like me, I don't think, or completely on the other side, like, are you doing okay? I said, I'm fine, it's all right, it's all good. But the one, one thing that was really neat, how God worked through that, a lot of local pastors from our conference uh, know me from teaching at licensing school all these years for new pastors and so many of them came up to me and said thank you for your willingness to do that even though you know you're not being elected thank you for your willingness it gives us encouragement and it gives us hope and it was just a reminder to me again of the witness and that we all have the example uh, and the opportunity that we have every day to reflect the light of Christ I just like to conclude with um, when we were up at Lakeside, it was nice to have our family up with us. And uh, Dave and Allie were there with the twins. And every morning they got up and they cried a lot. And they're, they're really good babies, but they just cried a lot. And the house we stay in is like 100 years old and it's got real thin wood walls. So, you know, wakes everybody up. And it was kind of like, like rude of the twins because, you know, they, they weren't even thinking about the rest of us. You know, they just got up and they... <laughs> They cried. They were just selfish. You know, they wanted to eat and have their bottle in the morning. And so they woke all the rest of us up. And it's like, you know, again, it was kind of rude, don't you think? I mean, because it was, it was self-centered. That's how they're made, right? I mean, that's, that's how they survive. That, babies are selfish. They're self-centered because that's how, they, that's how parents know when to feed them, know when they're hungry and when they need changed and all that. That's okay for babies. But as Christians... As followers of Jesus, it's not to be self-centered, but to be Christ-centered and to be other-centered. The question I'd just like to leave you with today is, how are you using, or we could say investing, how are you using or investing your influence in the lives of others, children, adults, co-workers, family members, friends, neighbors, strangers that we run into, we are all called as followers of Jesus to walk through the power, with the power of the Holy Spirit in the footsteps of Jesus. Do not let anyone look down on you. This is from 1 Timothy. Do not let anyone look down on you because 
you are young, or we could say old or rich or poor or male or female, married or single, or whatever other categories we have. Do not let anyone look down on you because you are young, but set an example for the believers in speech, in conduct, in love, in faith, and in purity. Be diligent in these matters. Give yourselves wholly to them so that everyone may see your progress. Watch your life and doctrine closely. The way you live, what you believe, the things you say, our attitudes, watch your life and doctrine closely, persevere in them, because if you do, you will save both yourself and your hearers. It does make an eternal difference. Will you pray with me? Lord, help us through your power, through your strength, through your word, to walk in the footsteps of Jesus day by day. Help us to love. Help us to put others first. Help us to seek first your kingdom and your righteousness so that the light of Christ would shine through us, be reflected in us, that many others would come to know you as their perfect, loving Heavenly Father as well. We pray this in Jesus' name. Amen.